want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. I'm going to continue ministering in the series, Unsecured. And I talked to you several weeks ago as I've been ministering this message about leaving that door open and not securing particular doors that allows the enemy to encroach into our lives and to work havoc, to work pain in our lives that we don't need. And today, I want to minister on the subject of why are you so anxious? Why are you so anxious? In Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God, so, if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have? so little faith. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of who? Unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. Hey, how many of y'all know today's troubles are, that's, that's enough, right? We don't need to be worried about tomorrow or next week or next year. They may never even get here you know, in life. And so here is a door that we often leave open in our lives, that works havoc in our lives. Sometimes when we use the words worry and anxiety, we kind of try to think about those. Is there a distinction between those words? One person I was studying by said that worries maybe are specific. In other words, you may have a bill that you have that you don't have the money to pay for it. Or you have a friend who's upset over something that you said, and they know it. And that causes you to be worried in your life. However, it seems like the anxiety seems to be a more generalized feeling of dread or fear. You ever had those moments that you just walked around and it was like you were just waiting for something to happen. It was like you just, you know, it's like that, what was it, the Peanuts guy that always walked around with the cloud over his head, one of those in the cartoons did, because he's always wondering when the, the hammer was going to fall on them. And so many Christians walk like that in a spirit of dread. And the Bible says, you know, the, the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And, and, and that's what we ought to be living for in our life. There's a famous quote that says, Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. And that's so true. Your worrying today is not going to affect tomorrow at all. You know, but your worrying today can take the joy out of your life, which is your what? It's your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so the enemy works you over at times through anxieties and worry to sap you of your joy. 
What were you anxious and worrying about this past week? You don't have to tell me. I'm, I, I'm not to the place that I believe that nobody had a single worry in here last week. Amen. Everybody's mind was just erased. You were just doing fine. There's worries. There's anxieties that come into our lives. So what were you worrying about? Health? Retirement? Kids? Marriage? Finances? Your spiritual walk with God? The condition of your country that it's in today? You know, Jesus warns us time and time again about keeping the door to anxiety and worry closed in our life. If you don't button that door up. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to ever live a life that is totally free, that you'll never have a worry or you'll never have an anxiety that comes your way. That would just simply be false. It's going to come at you, but it's what you do with it when it comes at you. When it presents itself to you to take root and to take home and it starts knocking on your door and it wants you to open the door to it, well, look, you have the right to keep that door shut to anxiety and worry taking you down. Amen? You see, anxiety and worry debilitates and cripples our lives in every sphere of its existence in other words there are no positive attributes to worry and anxiety it just isn't you look at it and you say well just think about it. if i'm going to worry what am positive am i going to get out of this if i'm going to have anxiety what can i positively expect to receive nothing at all it doesn't the, the, it has no benefits in that area we were created by god as a tripartite being it means that there are three connected to this body we are physical body we are mental we are soul and we are spirit which are spiritual when you allow the door to get open to anxiety and worry it affects all three of those areas of your life it touches your body it touches your mind and it touches your spirit it brings havoc, it brings distress in your life in those areas. And that's why Jesus spoke so much the way he did. They captured this message in Matthew here in 6 to show us the feelings that Jesus had concerning anxiety and worry. So what are some of the disadvantages and damages of leaving the door to worry and anxiousness cracked? Or open well if you want it there's mental distress it can make uh, it difficult for individuals to concentrate leading to decreased productivity and impaired decision-making then there's emotional turmoil anxiety often brings about intense emotions such as fear apprehension restlessness irritability then there's the physical symptoms Oftentimes, when a person goes through anxiety and goes through worry, they have high blood pressure, rapid heartbeats, dizziness, trembling, sweating, all kinds of things take place when worry grips your heart. Then there's impaired sleep. Anybody like a good night's sleep? Well, you know, worry will fix that for you. Praise the Lord. All you got to do is go to bed and just get yourself a good worry on your mind, and you won't sleep all night long. You'll toss and turn. And you'll get up feeling rotten as ever. Praise God. You know, that's what worry and anxiety does for you. It'll also impair your relationships. Because if you're not where you should be physically, emotionally in life, then when you try to get along with others, you, you know, you take someone who hadn't slept for a while, someone who's irritated, someone who's got anxiety, man, they ain't the one to mess with on Monday morning, amen? Because it will impair your relationships that we have in our life. There were people in the Bible, notables in the Bible, who had moments in their lives with anxiety and worry. So you don't have to be worried if you have that also in your life. King David was one. In Psalm 55, he pins something here that lets us know that he is under, he's left the door open. He said in Psalm 55, 4 through 6, my heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. 
fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. He's telling us that what's going on here with him has distressed him to the point that he don't know what to do in life. We see Elijah in 1 Kings 19 and 4. The scripture says that he went on alone into the wilderness traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. How many of you have ever told the Lord, I've had enough? You know, worry and anxiety, fretfulness and all of this. That's what Elijah did when he was running from, from Jezebel, when she was going to kill him for all the good things that he had been doing. And then the character that a lot of us most readily identify with is in Luke 10, 40 through 41, it is Martha having the duel with her sister Mary over things, over doing stuff. Mary has the audaciousness to go over there and sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to the peacemaker, the one who gives peace. And Martha, she can't handle that. Verse 40, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. Anybody in here get worried and upset over all the details? Over all the fine details? print over all these things in life that really in the whole crux of things probably don't really matter a whole lot but we're such good experts of making mountains out of molehills are we not and worry and distress will do that and you may be here today I, let me tell you something i've gone through a periods of time in my life especially when I, i've shared my testimony but especially when i left my company after 31 years of being there and after you know they paid me for nearly 13 months even after leaving and when all that went away and all my security blankets went away and I realized I was in a sure enough change season let me tell you something the devil jumped on me full force and I just invited him in amen and I sat there it would night after night would not sleep and, and would weigh away in terror and sweats breaking out. But there comes a time that if you're going to live and you're going to live, you get up, you walk over that door, and you slam that thing shut, and you say, enough is enough. My God knows my need, and he's able to take care of me in whatever I do. Even if you make a mistake, hallelujah, all things will work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose God loves you even when you worry about the mistakes you make hallelujah and he loves to fix mistakes he loves to fix things you can't fix hallelujah it brings glory it brings honor to his name when you shut the door to something that's causing you turmoil and open the door to the one in revelation that says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man will hear my voice and open that door i will come in and have a time of refreshment with him and he with me and we will rejoice in the glory and the power of god Oh, hallelujah. That's the God that we're talking about. You see, in our text, like a laser beam, Jesus focuses on worrying so that we would know exactly how he feels about it. There's three specific times in our text. Verse 25, he tells us, I tell you not to worry. In verse 25. In verse 28, and why worry? about your clothing in verse 31 so don't worry about these things so three times he repeats to us don't worry in life amen now you may not be what we call a worry wart you ever heard that term a worry wart you know i'm not going to ask you if you are a worry wart 
But if you are, we're going to pray for deliverance for you today. Amen? So that you walk in the joy of the Lord. So let's look at this for a moment of why we should not worry. Jesus told us not to worry. Then if he told us not to worry, why are we not to worry? Well, first of all, the scripture said in verse 32 of our text that God knows what you need. Did you know that? You see, we got these people who believe in a God who created us, left us here, gave us the intellect, gave us all the, the tools that we needed to operate in this society, and when his time frame is up, he will just come back and he will get us. That's not the God I serve. The God I serve is Emmanuel, God with us. He's not just sitting up there waiting for a time to come back. He sent the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts chapter 2 so he could be with us every day of our life. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, ever in life. There is none closer than Jesus. He is closer than the brothers in your life. You see, he doesn't desert us. He doesn't leave us. And he knows what you need. And when he knows what you need, he will provide what you need in life. Amen? How many of you believe that the Lord knows what you need? I mean, specifically today. He knows before you even know what you need. And he's preparing for you. You see, Hebrews 4 and 13 says this. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. Now, I, I can look at you today and you can put on that real beautiful smile you got and all that charm and shake hands. And I wouldn't have an idea sometimes unless the Spirit revealed it whether you had a need or not. You know, you can fool me, but you can't fool God. God sees everything. It's all open to him. And so he knows your need. Take comfort in that today. And he will supply your need. So he knows your need. Secondly, worrying waste time and energy and does nothing to solve your problems or to add anything beneficial to your life. You ever just caught yourself in that moment when you just started worrying and 30 minutes later you just come snap that and you're still just worrying like crazy? And ain't nothing been accomplished? Nothing's done? Nothing's changed? Except that you're more fretful, more fearful, more anxious than you've ever been. You see, it wastes time in life. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 25 through 26 from the Amplified Version, let me read what is almost a mirror passage of Matthew 6. And which of you, by being overly anxious and troubled with cares, can add a cubit to his stature or a moment or a unit of time to his age, the length of his life? So then, if you are not able to do such a little thing as that, why are you anxious and troubled about the cares of the rest? Why? You, you know, a cubit in the Bible was from the tip of your finger to your elbow right here. And he was saying, you can't even, by, if by worrying you can't get this to here, if you can't even add to your stature any, you can't even add any small lint to your life, what good is it? It doesn't do any good. It doesn't benefit you in your life and he says if you're not able to do such a little thing as that why are you anxious and troubled with cares about the rest thirdly he tells us in this text here that each day has enough challenges on its own and there's no need in the words of George Washington to borrow trouble from tomorrow well, you won't do that far. Borrow trouble from tomorrow. So many people, so many Christians are doing that. And listen to me. When you and I are consumed with worry and anxiousness, we destroy the seeds of provision 
power and promotion in our life for today and tomorrow. Listen, I said seeds for provision, power and promotion get destroyed when we get locked in to worry. Matthew 13 and 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life. There's your provisions. And the lure of wealth, there's the power, so that no fruit is produced. There's your promotion. Worry will ransack your house till you have nothing but an empty shell that has no faith and no ability to move forward in God. I look at the word pro-motion, P-R-O, and then motion. Think about that. How many of you believe that God promotes his people? He says he takes us from glory to glory, from step to step. We're always being changed into the image of God. He has pro motion going on in our life and worry and stress will halt the pro motion in your life if you want to move forward we've got to close the door to worry and anxiety amen now the word in that text i just read to you in matthew 13 and 22 uses the word crowded or choked out it, what he was saying here from the greek is those words mean to suffocate, to throttle down, or to crush. That's what worry and anxiety will do to you. It will stop the pro-motion, and it will throttle down, crush, and suffocate what God is trying to do in your life. Don't let the enemy work his wily tactics in your life to stop what God is already doing. Amen. He knows what you have need of. He will meet your needs. He has all the provision that you could ever want just asking. Amen. That's what he wants for us to do. And then worry and, and anxiousness can even make you unprepared for the coming of the Lord. Worrying and anxiety, if you don't close that door, can make you unprepared to meet Jesus. Luke 21, 34. Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware. Hey, worrying, fretfulness. You know, I thought as I was reading and studying the passage here, and I, I kept reading Matthew 6, I thought, when we worry, truly, now I'm, I'm talking to myself here, what an insult to our God. Well, what are we saying to him? And I know I do it. I'm guilty, just like I'm sure many of you are. But I, here he's sitting here telling me if I would just believe him and walk with him and just, just yield my heart and my life to him, he will provide these things. For me in my life amen and yet we get anxious about it and God says who do you think I am what kind of God do you think you're serving that I would create you put my spirit within you and then not look after you what kind of father would I be what kind of father would I be to you I'm learning folks <laughs> that's all I can say to you I'm learning as each year goes by to hopefully trust him more than I did the day before because I see that he brings me down he humbles me so that I can see that he is Lord and God of all so don't worry don't be so worried that that day catches you unaware fourthly Jesus makes it clear from our text that worrying is a faith issue Worrying is a faith issue. If faith, listen to this real closely. If faith, according to Hebrews 11, is the evidence of things not seen, but instead hoped for and believed, then worry and being anxious is faith's opposite and is therefore the evidence of things not seen, but feared and believed feared 
and believe rather than hope for and believe. Oh, it's so important. The book of Job is about a very wealthy and righteous man named Job. God had allowed Satan to take away his children, his wealth, and Job had only his wife and his very life left. And all of this seemingly transpired in a very short span of time. And then in Job 3, we see him complaining about his troubles and wishing that he had never been born. And he said this in Job 3 and 25, What I always feared has happened to me. What I dreaded has come true. You ever said something like that? I just knew that was going to happen. I, I just had this feeling in my spirit that it was just going to go south. It was just going to go bad. It was just going to, you know, we just have that old, y'all want me to sing hee-haw again, you know, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, what? I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Praise the Lord. Sounds spiritual, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. Suffering for Jesus. Hallelujah. Going through this for God Almighty. God's looking over there going, you sure you're my child? Amen. You know, that's not the way I treat my kids. You know? So we, we see this. He said, what I, I feared, this was going to happen to me. Be careful that you don't bring to pass your own self prophecies in life because when it's by faith you also have the ability to open the windows of heaven and to cause the door from heaven to open up to bring you what you need in your life versus keeping the door open to the devil who's going to steal kill and destroy everything that you have in your life God doesn't want you doing that now I think the flip side of this thing with Job that can be encouraging to an individual is this. Who in their right mind would have ever believed that Job would have worried? You say, what are you talking about? Well, look at Job 1, 1 through 3. There once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. Listen to what he owned. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in that entire area. Man, he was what we call filthy rich. He had, well, he wasn't filthy because he was righteous, so we can't use that on him. He had everything. And yet he reveals to us in the third chapter of Job that he feared and he had been worrying about something dreadful happening to his life. Folks, in the name of Jesus, I tell you not to live that way. Do not live in dread. Live in fear. I mean, live in faith, walk in faith, praise God in faith. Everything you do, do it in faith, in life, and drive that anxiety out of your life. So it reminds us through Job that it doesn't matter. You, you see, some of us look at all those people in Hollywood and say, well, they don't worry about a thing. It's kind of what, when you read Psalm 73 and the battle mentally that Asap went through, he says, when I began to observe the wicked, and I saw that the more wicked they did, the richer they got, the more powerful they got. He said, then I begin to envy the wicked. He said, my feet had almost slipped. In other words, I had almost gone under. Let me tell you something. The rich 
worry. The rich have anxiousness. Everybody faces these things in life. Don't think they're better off than you are. If you got God as your Father and Jesus as your Savior and the Holy Spirit as your companion, hallelujah, you got everything you need to do to walk out in faith every day and tell the devil that you're not going to accept fear, anxiety, and worry in your life today. Amen? Because Jesus said he knew my need, he was providing my need, he never leave me nor forsake me, he would always be with me, and if I messed up, then all things were going to work together for my good, and I'm going to live prosperous and righteous in Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Brad and Christy, if y'all come. Listen. Fifthly, and we've kind of been dancing all around this today, but worry and being anxious is at its heart and core fear. It's fear. Well, what if I don't have a house tomorrow? Well, what if I don't have a car tomorrow? Well, what if I don't have this provision? Or what if I can't provide for my family? Or what if I can't uh, do this? Or what if the banks go under? What if the world systems go down? What, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? What if? What if? Well, you don't ever have to ask that question about God. What if? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am, praise God. I am your provision. I am your life. I am your strength. I am everything that you need in life. You don't worry about whether he will be. He is. I see this, the screen up there. What is fear? It is false evidence that appears real. When you're facing fear, it's because the devil has drummed up something that goes against the word of God meant to shake you and to rattle you. Meant to shake you. And it's false evidence that appears real. I think early this morning, I, 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 I couldn't sleep. I got up early this morning, even going to bed last night. I began to think about the passage that the Scripture says in the last days, in which I really believe we're in. He said, yet once more, will I not only shake the heavens, but I'm going to shake the earth also. Now, folks, let me tell you something right there. We are walking into a day and age right now that things that have become common in your life are going to become uncommon. Because the Lord is going to do a shaking. And when he completes it, you're not going to look the same, the world's not going to look the same, and the church is not going to look the same. Because everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. If it is not on the proper foundation, if it's not grounded, if it's not truth, if it's not righteousness in God, it's going to crumble and fall. Now, some of you here that know Jesus may not be walking with him where you ought to be in life. But when that happens, don't you abandon your faith. Don't you abandon your walk. You stand still and see the salvation of God. When the shaking is over, if nothing is left but you and God, you got everything you need. Amen? Everything. He's a sure foundation. When you've dug down deep and you've hit solid rock and you started establishing your life upon him, the center of all things, let the shaking come because it cannot shake the foundation of God it remains sure Jesus through the cross through his blood that was shed through his resurrection he became the chief cornerstone that everybody else rejected and upon him that you stand all worrying all fretting all fear all anxiousness all worry must submit don't open that door. And I'm going to tell you right now, if your door is open, there's things that are looming at you that are large, turn it over to God. Let him fight that battle. It's not always easy, but you've got to learn to lay it over on God. You see, sometimes our pride won't allow us to do that. We're too prideful. 
We think we got to fight. We think we got to do it. We think we got to prove to the world we can do this. Why don't you let God prove to you what the Word says He was able to do? Why don't you just turn loose and let go and let the God who loves you and saved you and ministered to you every day and walks by you every day just humble yourselves down and say, here it is, God, and here I am. Praise God. I don't care what I look like tomorrow or the next day as long as I'm being changed into your image. Supply and meet my needs for all that I need and help me to be a child of the King who walks in faith and not fear today. Amen? That's what God wants for you. And if you're in that place today where you're wrapped up, you're tangled, all up in a web of fear and frustration. I've been there, and I know that you got to learn to let it go. Because God's got a road for you that's been determined by Him. He's got a pathway that He's got you on, turn loose, and watch God meet and supply your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> I can preach this because the Bible's true. I can preach this and brag on my Heavenly Father because everything i got to brag on Him about is true. Hallelujah. There's no lie. He's good. He's good. Would you just bow your heads with me this morning all across the building? Look, it's no shame. Pastor Jeff has been there. Man, I was deep in my anxiousness and my fear, folk. I had the whole tripartite being being affected. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't work. I couldn't do all them things for several, several weeks. I had to go to doctors and get sleep medicine just to where I could even sleep a few hours at night. And it was he that brought me out. And I'm going to tell you, you don't have to bear that burden today, folks. You don't have to walk under that. It's too heavy. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, begs God, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hallelujah. It's time this morning to lighten the load. So that you can be everything that God wants you to be. It's time to secure that door and bolt the hatches on it. And when the devil comes knocking with his worry, you just let God answer the door. You just let Jesus answer the door the next time. It'll put the devil on the run. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor Jeff, there's been some things that's brought anxiety, anxiousness, and fear, even depression, to my heart and to my spirit. And Pastor, I just I need God right now just to take my load. I, I just need to come into a deeper, a fuller, a greater relationship with Him in life to know that He's my Father and He'll provide for me. And I don't have to go through all this worrying and being aging myself and breaking down my health and breaking down my spirit. And if that's you here today and you would just like Pastor Jeff to pray over you, especially throughout this week. Would you just slip?